Yo, yo, what's up guys? Hope everybody's having a great day today. So in today's video, I figured I'd just talk about like how to stay ahead as a software engineer. Now, there's a couple things that I've adapted in my career to stay ahead and actually stay up to date with trends in tech and whether I should go a certain route or just kind of stay in my lane a little bit or just evaluate things and actually learn from other people, right? Because I can't learn everything on my own. The good thing is, is that I have a team that I work with every single day that they bring up some cool technology, they demo it, they show it off, and it's either up to us whether we wanna go with it or not, you know? Or if you wanna do this stuff on your own, you could do it on your own as well. But, you know, to stay consistent and stay on top of software engineering trends and what's going on in tech, you have to be number one, passionate about it in some regard, right? And number two, you just have to find a lane to where you're creating these daily habits to getting better every single day. All right. If you don't, if you want to do the bare minimum, you're going to be doing the bare minimum as a developer. And in today's job market, you have to kind of excel in learning different technologies and different tools to stay afloat. All right. So I have a list of things that I constantly do on a day to day basis and you know, I just wanted to relay this over to you guys that are trying that are kind of struggling in tech or tr struggling to figure out what you want to do. You want to be a software engineer, a data scientist, you know, you want to jump into some particular area in tech, but you're kind of stuck, right? You're stuck learning something. This is how I would go about doing it if I really wanted it. And I know that at the end of the day, once I get to that goal, that everything is going to be better for it, you know, career wise, life wise, just flexibility with your time, everything. Number one is that you have to constantly learn. As software engineers, we are constantly learning every single day on different things. Whether you're working with a team, you're working on a separate project, trying to build something, you're gonna be learning new technologies every single day. You're gonna be learning new methodologies of how to implement technologies or integrations every single day. Now, do you have to learn everything that's under the sun? No. Like I said, pick and choose what makes sense to you, what resonates with you, and then just apply it. Apply, fail, apply, fail. That's the whole point of being a software engineer. There's no perfect engineer out there, okay? And if you notice like engineers like on YouTube that are like building things like from scratch perfectly, trust me, they failed multiple times, errors, everything. So don't let that inflate your mindset to think like you got to be just like this person to be perfect every single time. It's not going to happen. Trust me. Okay. I felt so many times building applications, doing it the wrong way. And I really had to take, take a step back. And, you know, if it was something very critical that went out to production and I had to fig figure it out and fix it, I learned my lesson from that. So it's all about learning and understanding when you fail those lessons that you're learning to not do it again, but then also, how can you do things better, right? So if you're able to do that, and you have that mindset to be open to that, you're gonna do just fine. But constantly learning something new will open up more opportunities for you, bro. I'm just being real with you. So, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, if you're learning React.js, for example, right? And Node.js together. Don't be afraid to look into like Python, you know, and React.js or look into like Ruby on Rails or Rust or GraphQL. Like start looking into these different areas and see what fits for your like what you want to do. And also the syntax, too. I honestly I like Python a lot. I think Python has a special place for doing certain things in tech, right? And building certain things. But if you are a JavaScript developer, you might just go with Node.js because it's the same syntax. But you could create a proof of concept of using Python versus Node, which is better, which more are you comfortable with? Using GraphQL, are you comfortable with that? Using Rust. You gotta just play around with those ideas to where, okay, now I'm, I'm generating my tech stack, right? And once you do that, trust me, bro, you're gonna be in a good spot. You're going to be in a very good spot. So don't be afraid to learn something new and deviate from your path a little bit to get to a better answer. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole point of being a software engineer. Also, AI tools, very important. 
use AI to its advantage, okay? No, learn how to prompt an AI to give you a better answer every single time. The fact that you're not using AI, you're gonna get left behind, okay? I used to be that way too, because I thought AI was cheating. Like I'm using AI to solve a problem where I should be able to solve it because I'm a senior engineer, right? I should already have all the answers, but honestly, I don't have all the answers, bro. I gotta, like, usually we would just go on Stack Overflow, go on these forums, go on YouTube, try to figure things out. But with AI just there, you go on ChatGPT and it's prompted, hey, I'm running into this error, or how do I solve this problem with this library or framework? And then you continue that cycle until you get the, the, the solution. It saves a lot, of, a lot more time, okay? So learn as much as you can and don't be afraid to do it. Number two is um, side projects. Now, some people just don't like to do side projects, right? And I understand that is is it's a daunting task to start a project if you don't know exactly what you want to build. But starting a side project to where you're solving a real world problem will make it easier for you to grasp those concepts and understand and learn as much as you can. Okay. And say for example, if you're just putting out that project for your portfolio, you need to make sure that you understand from an idea perspective exactly what you want to build. The biggest thing that you could do is, again, use ChatGPT, use any AI tool that's out there to give you a blueprint of what you need to build or what you should build to solve a particular problem that resonates with you. OK, it could be, for example, um, like Dropbox, right? Like a file system. You wanted to create something to where it's easier to maintain your your file system eco ecosystem. You could go into ChatGPT, ask it, how can I do this? How can I solve this particular problem? It will give you a prompt of what you potentially can do. And then you could tweak it to a certain way to where it hits the nail on the head and then you could just start executing and building. But even if you were to get the blueprint, the biggest thing that you need to do is actually sit in front of your computer and start building. Figure out what the tech stack is, right? Like, what do you exactly do you want to learn? Is there a front end tech stack? Figure out the framework that you want to dive into. Keep it simple if you want to, because you could easily over engineer a project. And I think every engineer needs to go through that or every engineer, at least that is working right now, has done that already. They have over engineered a project to where you didn't really need all that bloat in your project anyway. You could have built it customly and actually it would have been more secure and, and more efficient. Right. But this is the stuff that you need to learn. So doing these side projects and actually figuring out or creating a system that works for you is going to pay off dividends because you already know you're already going to have the blueprint to do things and it's going to make it easier for you to jump out there and solve these problems for other people and be more valuable. Right. And these tools will help other developers, too, with their productivity, their time, um, just getting things done more efficiently. You know, I'm all for like a, a new way of doing things, you know, like I used to be one way to where like I had my system and I'm sticking to it. This is what's working for me. But after having an open mind to other people and how they do things on a day to day basis, I realized, yo, my system sucked. It was trash. So then I had to re I had to talk to these other people and then learn from them and just ask questions and try to figure out what's what's next. Right. So. You know, these side projects is going to help you really expand your mindset on different areas. Like this is what's important of solving a problem on your own, creating a blueprint to getting to writing the code to solve that problem and try and demand. Right. You try it, you fail, you rewrite it, you keep going through that infinite cycle until you get to the to the solution that you want. That's all part of the game, bro. All right. Number three is that you got to learn beyond the code. This is <laughs> this is very important. OK, uh, you could be a great coder. You could write code like that. But the problem is, is that you don't understand system design. You don't understand from a product standpoint, what's the most important thing? You don't understand user flow. This is why it's so important to understand systems to its core. What integrates with one system versus the other? What problem are we solving with this integration? And how we can make things better it's more smooth if you were to understand integrations because every company is going to have an integration piece but in it, understand integrations in their purpose that's going to help you understand or at least provide a solution to make it better 
And, you know, just writing code, it, it's great. Like everybody wants to be a great programmer to where they could just write code on a whim and then, you know, just be done with it. But yo, the, the money is where you understand the system. You understand these key integrations, you know, to get things up and running a lot faster, not just building it from scratch. If there's something that's already out there in the market that does the job that you needed to do, and a lot of other companies are using it, are you going to build something on your own just because, or are you going to go with that solution? I would go with that solution immediately because it solves a problem relatively quickly. And all it is, is just plug and play at that point, you know, and by understanding the architecture of a system is going to help you understand what's more important, right? What's more important to being a key engineer to either make the integration better or improve the workflow that it already introduces into the eco space. All right. So if you were to understand it at a business standpoint from the integration piece and then also the user experience as to why that integration helps with not only the business but also the user itself man it's it's a win-win game so learn as much as you can beyond the code coding is always going to be there right but understanding the architecture has so much more potential than just sticking with just the code. Number four is um, you got to master those soft skills, bro. Like th this is very important. This, so I learned that very late in my career and I wasn't pushed to learn it, but now I, like, that's all I thrive on is soft skills. Communicating between different teams, communicating with the people that don't know anything technically, but I can dumb it down to where they understand exactly what's go going to happen or what the flow is. And this is why documentation on anything that you build is very important. And a lot of people neglect documentation. Let me tell you something. I built a lot of features in the past to where other people had to support it. And I was the, what you would call this, the, um, the subject matter expert at that particular, these particular features. And I felt like I would get bombarded with questions all the time. So of course, I felt like, okay, what do I need to do? Or at least I had to think about how, how can I teach other people this feature from a technical standpoint to where they could then support it or help others that are having issues. Documentation. The way you would write out documentation is just a brief introduction about what the feature is and what problem you're trying to solve. If you're, if it's strictly just for engineering, the data architecture of that piece, what is the integration piece for it? Like, how is everything working on the back end? I'm telling you, if you do that, you explain that flow, you're gonna have a lot less questions. And any other problems that you see coming up with that feature that, you know, is just a training issue, you put that in the documentation as well, you good, bro. You good. I've done that multiple times and that freed up a lot of, just the extra questions that I would get. And I'm like, yo, this is great. So any feature that I'm, I'm, I'm fitting to build, you get in documentation, you get in very thorough documentation on how everything works. And this is just going to build your skill set as to how to think as a software engineer. And then also, if you want to get from junior to senior, trust me, documenting stuff, that's going to leaps and bounds. You're going to get there quick. Just by that, you understand it's going to show that you have a, a great deal of understanding of how things are built how things are integrated without that documentation i'm telling you you're going to run into a lot of problems and then when once you're faced with a question that you wasn't prepared for it's going to show so do as much documentation as you need to matt like work on those soft skills talk to people every single day it doesn't matter if it's technically or not if you if you have the way to talk and just you know convey whatever you're thinking and not being afraid to do it it's going to help you tremendously in your career it's helped me tremendously in my career for every single thing. And especially with presenting an idea, like actually presenting, you know, something to, or at least a flow technically, and then s simplifying that to where I could bring that same presentation to other areas of the business. Okay. 
Very important. Do not neglect your soft skills. At least talk to someone every single day. And then the last thing, guys, this is very important because your boy went through this a long time ago and it caused the burnout. Hate to admit that, but it did. You got to find balance. OK, you got to find balance in terms of, OK, I'm working 12 hour days every single every single week. Why is that? Why am I working 12 hour days? Am I actually solving these problems? Am I getting things done? Or am I just doing this continuous cycle of just work piling up for me? Right. Or, or introducing more issues. Trust me, I'm telling you right now, you got to find that balance. My philosophy now is deep work for at least four hours a day to where I'm focused on my task that I need to work on for that particular day. And then once I'm good to go with at least a couple of them, I check that off the list. I now have accountability that I did what I was supposed to do. And this is very important. This builds momentum. So from Monday to Friday, you do the same thing. You're going to, you're going to be more excited to get things done as opposed to dreading it. Right. And I like to work on the hardest thing possible first. Because the easiest thing is just you're going to do it, whatever, and it's going to give you a little dopamine hit, right? But working on the hardest thing, that's going to give you a bigger dopamine hit is delayed gratification. Because you spent the time and the brain power to figure out how to solve this complex problem. And now you can work on the easy stuff as like, as like a bonus. It's like, hey, like I could just get this done. And now you're buying back your time. It's all about being productive and, and not spending too much time in front of the computer. I'm, I'm telling you, you will burn out fast if you do this. 12 hour days for what, bro? There's no point. At least at least four to six, bro. That, I, that minimum, four to six hours a day. I think that's a sweet spot. 12 hours, you gotta be either on call or this. you're starting a business and you got, you're doing everything on your own. But do not fall into this trap of working harder will give you better results. Working smarter will give you better results. I, I've tried this philosophy, working smarter, figuring out like my daily habits of how to, how to get things done effectively to where I'm not drowning. And this has worked effectively for me for, I would say two years now. And it's just part of my routine. I, I can't sit here and just be working at a computer all day. I, I can't, I can't do it. So if you feel like you're getting to that point, one thing that you could do, you could start this habit where you're getting stressed out for the day. If you have some free time, take a walk from your computer. If you're working in the office, shut down the computer, take a walk, grab some water, do something, talk to someone for like a couple minutes. I would say like 15 to 30 minutes and then get back to it. If you're working from home, that's even better. You could go to the gym on your lunch break, right? Or if you have some time, just go out, walk outside, walk the block. You know, you can't just sit in front of the computer because, you know, it's not healthy. So the more you take your time to be outside, to get that fresh air, to get that refresher to where you're not thinking about work, but then you come back and you just at a total Zen, you'll probably figure out the problem. And this has happened to me multiple times. So like if I'm stuck on something, stop what I'm doing. I'll go to the gym, work out. I'll come back, fresh your mind. I know exactly what to do. And it's happened to me true and true every single time. So you have to find balance, guys. Do not work hard to the point where you're burnt out and you hate what you're doing every single day. All right. So that's it, guys. That's the video. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. Let me know how you feel about this list. If there's anything else that I didn't bring up that you want to share with the group, please share it with us. And, um, you know, I really do appreciate you guys in the comments and I appreciate the collaboration because you guys are giving me some good topics to talk about. I'm glad that you're getting value from these videos and I'm going to continue to give you, give you these, uh, these gems to help you in your career. Cause that's why I'm here. All right. We'll talk soon.